Hi everybody. So today uh, we will be talking about rebuilding the new generation style uh, float ride seat on our John Deere 3010. Um, so the reason I am going to work on it is because it just bottoms out terribly. Uh, you sit on it and you basically sit at the bottom. I've messed with the adjustments and everything and all signs point to it's just not right and I'll show you what I found uh, just so far. Um, so I took the side shields off already. Uh, there were two bolts uh, down here and a couple on the back on each side. So those came off and then the seat here I already have it unbolted. Uh, I'm kind of shocked. It's just four itty bitty like quarter inch bolts I have them still in there just four little bolts that hold that seat on doesn't give me too good of a feeling if uh, something wild ever happens that that would hold me on but anyways uh, so let's walk around to the back here and I will show you uh, what all is going on with this So first off, looking in the back here, I know the cable inside the system is broke. I knew that mechanism part of it didn't work, so I'll show how that works in the end when I get this built right. And I figured the shock absorber was bad, and it's more than bad. I don't know if you can tell, this is like all crooked, and the uh, like the absorber is flat out broke, bent in there. Um, so I took this light bracket off here first. I know I'm kind of skipping these steps to get to the actual seat disassembly or fixing it. So that light bracket was just bolted on here with the six bolts. Um, I took that off that way I didn't have to cut wiring or anything. Uh, so I got the seat undone. And then the actual seat itself comes off via these two bolts here and two on the other side. So I could see that the cable was already broke here. So the re kind of return mechanism on it wasn't working. Uh, and I'll just have to explain that after I get it fixed. And then, like I said, it was bottoming out so I knew the shock absorber wasn't right. Uh, if I'm able to look up here, you can actually, it's hard to tell from this perspective, it's like completely separated, the shock absorber, the, the shaft or something from it completely broke. That's why it's not even close to working. Um, so with the side shields off, here, here's where those side shields uh, bolted on the back. And also right here was the light bracket. I still have the wiring attached, so that's why I just took that off, moved it over there. Uh, and then with the seat, off those four tiny bolts we're able to remove the rest of the seat by removing these two bolts here and the two on the other side okay there we go so we got it off and uh this is small enough i can actually take this home and just work on it there in the warm garage here's the tractor where it came off so you can see um, these bolts here, they're 15 sixteenths. Pretty hefty, but, you know, it's bolted in the back, and you've got all that weight on the front canter levering off of it, so makes sense. All right, uh, now on to the guts. Okay, so how this is supposed to work is when this is attached, it's spring-loaded. When you pull this that I can get it one-handed. It slides up. And uh, it, it should be spring-loaded to come back. And at that point, you can adjust this to different positions. And you can see that working up there. Now when you sit on the seat and slide back down, it finds that position and clicks in. So that's why you gotta you gotta pull this up first 
release the seat back and then adjust the position. You can't just adjust it from here because it's locked in that groove. So to get this off, you just uh, release that. Um, that wire is supposed to be just on a hook under here somewhere. I'll have to find it. And uh, then I believe this just slides right off once I get this out of the way. Okay, so now you can see I moved the kind of lock adjustment piece all the way over. And at this point, it can slide off. And now that I have that off, you can see the hook right in here where that uh, wire is supposed to be latched. Um, so when you're going to take that off uh, in this zone here, underneath the top set points, there's that hook. You can try and undo it from there. All right, so I am first going to work on this part. We'll kind of rebuild this and then I'll go to the base. Um, so to get all of this spring and uh, kind of roller out, we first got to take out a snap ring here it looks like. Uh, I think this pushes down and twists to kind of release it. Uh, so let me get my tools. All right, I don't have my snap ring pliers with me here, but I was able to get this off with the screwdriver. Now I believe you push this in and it somehow releases. Yeah, once we turn it like that. And that starts to push out and I'll give it a tap okay so if you look here this piece is actually holding on the spring so we are going to twist this out using the slots there and see if we can pull this out and then with that, uh, well, old, old spring ain't what she used, all she used to be. She just kind of fell apart there. And uh, we'll pound out this shaft and take these pieces off one at a time. I guess before I go and take all these things apart, it's good to note the orientation and position of these pieces. So you've got your spring end here interfaces with this pin on here wire ties towards the spring i'm just kind of noting this for myself because i put it back together i might reference the video uh, you've got a sprint uh, washer out here and it looks like a there you go a snap ring right there all right so i'm trying to play with my phone stand I want you guys to be able to see as much as possible, so I have two hands here, too, so. Um, so I pounded that out. We'll take our spring out. That spring actually looks pretty good, really. Not bad. Um, and we'll take, I don't know that I really need to take this piece off, so we'll go ahead and take it off. Looks like I need to pound that a little bit more. All right, so I actually had to uh, get this snap ring here out of its groove to pound it out a little bit more, and I'm able to slip this off now. Now this uh, wire here is held on with a little uh, machine, uh, like a shear pin there, roll pin, excuse me. Uh, so I'll pound that out and uh, we'll get the new wire on. I don't think I'm going to take this out anymore because... I don't, I don't know that I have a new snap ring for this, if that came with the kit, if that's one of the three or not. And I didn't see a washer like this, which is just a washer. That should be fine. So 
I'm not going to take that out anymore. Okay, so I think we're ready to put this back together. So I've got my washer, um, got my new wire on here, the roll pin. Now, very important to get this piece in the right orientation. So you want, in this case, your roll pin to the right. You want the roll pin towards the spring. And if you don't remember, you'll see why in a moment. We can put our spring on now very important here so you want this tab here to be in the groove of that shaft then you want this curled edge here to be around that roll pin so we'll get that started and this end around that roll pin so that's why when you wind this up, it's going to pull on that spring, and that's what gives you the tension um, as you uh, raise and lower the seat. So, all right, I think I'm ready to hammer this in a little bit, and we will get this spring on. <clears throat> now, getting this spring on can be quite fun. Um... I don't know that there's any real secret to it, just try and compress it and get it around the uh, shaft and then, you know, hammer the shaft all the way through. So I don't want to take up your time uh, watching me do this and fumbling with it for a minute, so let's just fast forward. Alright, so we got the spring in there. We've got the shaft sticking out on this side. Um, just a reminder too, if you were like me and had to take that snap ring out of its groove, put that back in its groove. Got this piece here to insert. And now the fun part of getting that snap ring on. Okay, so with this piece fully back together, we can move on to the bottom section and uh, mate them again. All right, so now on to the base. Um, see so here we've got our rollers. Of these. They have some shims in there, so we don't want to lose track of them. That one didn't have any. Maybe that one didn't have any after all either. Let's see here. Nope. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Here's shim. Broken one. So I'll we'll note that on the front left there was one shim. New ones came with uh, with the assembly. Alright, so to start taking this apart, I'm going to take these pieces off here. Um, you do have a left and a right. So I'm going to take this out here and here on both sides and see what we got from there. So I got one apart here and I'm noting this for myself too. So on this part the washer went in between the pieces and back here the washer goes under the nut. All right one more to go. Well, this is interesting, and we may be at a stopping point soon. So I have all new arms here with bushings in them. So you can see how bad and oval that is. Um, the ones on this end, I think I'm going to have to take an air gun too. I, I can't hold it very well. The part that really concerns me is this piece. That piece is no better. I mean, that's real bad, and I don't have a new one of these. So I'm going to have to look up and see if I can get one of these 
of what I should do because that's that that's pretty bad. Um, even that side over there, you can tell it's, it's not good at all. Um, this did have a little bit of spring on it, considering that's broke. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a different order that that should have been taken apart. Uh, if your spring was fully intact, um, I don't want you to take it apart and have it fly apart. So uh, I'm not sure what the proper way of uh, unloading that is. Well, darn. Um, okay, I guess let me take this apart a little bit more and see what we got here. So I just realized I am in a peculiar situation here, if I am correct. See, normally, um, you know, you've, you've got your rod in here and it's connected to your shock absorber and, you know, it's the spring is under tension, but the length is a little bit sort of set because that that is connected. But but that's that's completely separated in there and so now I've got this spring that is ready to release whenever I let it release so until that spring is in its totally relaxed length it it's it's sprung so I need to figure out how to safely get this apart without it going boing in my face or for that matter anywhere else well I think it's time to walk away from this and scratch my head a little bit all right so I had found that it was that bar there was caught between two of the coils I got uh, this adjustment piece off so that straddled that there and then this jack bolt adjustment bolt came up through. This is a left-handed thread. So apparently it had a like a cotter pin there that was all messed up. But uh, okay, so we got that off, and then I I kind of pulled this up gently to see if I could straighten it out, and that worked. So the spring is at least straight now. So now I believe I just need to compress it and get it undone from here okay so i'm at our other shop here and had my handy dandy father-in-law help me so what i had to do was i stuck a pry bar in this hole here and then i leveraged down to put tension on the spring then i was able to get these pieces undone uh, from their kind of clips right there so thankfully there wasn't too much spring on it um, but you can see compared to a new one how much longer it wants to be so now we'll we can take this piece out and uh, we got to get the new pins in this one here and the bushings uh, got to see how we're going to do that All right, so we got these new pins and bushings and things in here. Um, so what you got going on, I'm sorry I couldn't show this being actually done, but hopefully I can explain it well enough. Um, so this is your, I guess it's technically the lower pin. Uh, so this shaft is longer than the other one. Um, you have rubber bushings. You've got a washer and right here is a e-clip now what you can do is you can put um from one side stick the sh stick a bushing on the washer the e-clip stick it in to this piece and then the other side what you have to do is you actually need to compress um, you can put on the bushing and the washer and then you got to compress from the washer to the base of the shaft 
Um, now I'll, I'll show you what we did. It took us a while to figure out what was the best method to do that. Um, and we, oddly enough, found uh, a door hinge and stuck that in a vise and it it wrapped itself around the washer uh, enough that we could uh, press on the washer and still get the e-clip in and then the vise pressed on the end of the shaft and that compressed it and we did that for both sides and we were able to get the the e-clips in so you you'll just need something to to hold the outside of the washer because you got to get that e-clip in it can't be like a, a tight you know socket or, or something like that you know um, and then you've got the bottom piece in the way so it, like I said the door hinge ended up working perfectly uh, so you'll notice I have two different washers here um, and I will just note these washers they're like cast um, a little bit of bending and they just snap um, so I I replaced it with a regular washer but just be aware of that be careful on these washers they're I don't know hardened or, or what and then uh, the kit I got had new Eclipse but um, here is an example of them so um, since I don't have the this adjuster piece on, uh, this actually just sits in here without any tension. It's it's not very awkward. Um, let me see if I can get you a little different view here. So again, this is just sitting in this groove in here, that shaft, and then I've got these pieces in here. And I think at this point I'm ready to put this adjuster piece on and I'll feed the bolt in. Um, so that has to be squeezed a little bit. And uh, so this piece, I don't know if I did it or the previous owner did it. So there's supposed to be a like a roll pin in here. I forget if I mentioned that earlier in the video. Um, when I took this apart, there was barely any sticking out such that I didn't even know there was a roll pin in it. Um, so I tried threading this out and since it was sticking out, I totally boogered up the threads on these two pieces. Um, so rather than buying a new piece, because as many junk tractors as there are that this piece is probably sitting around, just a quick search on um, Google what people companies wanted for this piece was ridiculous i bought a tap for this it is a left-handed thread that's why i had to buy a special tap it's a 5 8 11 left hand thread so if you need to you know redo one of these pieces that's what it is so i ran a tap down it got it cleaned up bolt goes through mostly nicely even though i screwed up the thread on that and didn't get that die for that um so I'll go ahead and get this piece installed. Another thing to mention on this piece is make sure that the arrow is towards your indicator gauge. And, um, you know, thread this bolt all the way in. And you can still get this in, get this in even after you've installed this. Put these clips on. Uh, just use a pry bar or something, give a little leverage and you can get that piece in. Okay, so you can see I got this one side back on. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is the direction of these pieces. I think of this as a wing. Think wings out. Um, and then you can tell if you hadn't painted it, you know, like this was rusty on this side here. Uh, so I knew the bar went here, and same thing on this side. Kind of like looking at this piece. You can see it's rusty there, so that met with this here. Um, if you remember earlier in the video, I talked about how egg-shaped this was. You can buy this piece new. I just decided to JB weld it. Um, simply came down to a cost thing, whether it works or not. I don't know, it was worth a try. 
I want to say this is like 170 bucks or something. So um, we're just going to try that and see what happens. Um, so we'll get that back together. So for this side here, I have this paired like it should be for this hole is this bushing. This is a new bushing goes inside here. You've got the washer on the back side with the nut and then the bolt goes in through this side. And as for up here, you've got your, um, I guess you can, I don't know, insert if you want to call it that. Uh, I've got that in the wrong direction. So I got to turn that around. It's just barely seated in there. You've got the bolt that goes through here and here you have the washer in between. Uh, just note anytime you have one of these, you want to torque these to 40 foot pounds. Very important uh, so that they're not too tight but not too loose that they will come apart on you. All right, let's get this other one on. Okay, so I've got my new rollers here and I also have eight shims to go with it. I have four that came with the kit that are 10 thou and four that are 20 thousandths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the rollers on. Uh, we'll slide everything on and then we'll measure and see if we have like 10 thousandths between the wheel or the rollers and uh, the, the upper slider piece. So I could definitely use a couple shims there. And it looks like I could use some on the bottom also. All right, so for me, it seems like the right adjustment was approximately the 20 mil shim on each side. Uh, if I added another 10 thousandths, it actually would rub um, uh, when, that, when I was putting this piece on. So I know for sure that that isn't right. All right. So next, I think we will go ahead and hook up our spring. So I've got my cable here and I'll actually need to play with this because if you remember my Cable was broke um, off, uh, it, it wasn't hooked. So um, give me a moment to figure this out because I don't want to show you guys wrong, but your hook is right up under here. I'll see if I can get a, a good video of that again and uh, we'll roll this up. So yeah, looking at this up close, see right there is your little hook where that is supposed to be. Uh, hooked on to. So from there the bottom part is done and we are ready to move on uh, and integrate the top sliding piece again. Okay to wind this up you take your screwdriver here and we push that tab in and then while we move this up, we're gonna, we're gonna roll this up as we keep coming up. And it's important to note that the spring or the wire is always within this groove here. I think that's as far as she'll go. I don't think I can go anymore. For to sit on it. It moves up. I'm not sure if it just needs a little lubrication in this or um, I know it's not on the seat so I can't push down very well. back up. 
Doesn't seem like it slides up quite with the fervor that it should, so I may have to play with it and uh, see if I can get the spring a little bit tighter, or, like I said, get some lubrication on it, but there you have it. Okay, so yeah, it just needed to be used a couple times, and you know, it seems to work all right. Well, there you have it guys it's back on seems to work wonderfully uh, still a little stiff uh, in the handle and everything uh, not sure why but uh, of course uh, compared to a shock absorber that was doing nothing um, it's much smoother now has some smooth bounce to it so should be a way more comfortable ride so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video learned something let me know tips, tricks, anything I missed. Uh, never done a seat before, so you all have a good day.